Hey everybody, how's it going? As I've said, many companies are really trying to work towards this idea that you don't own your device, you you just rent it. And you know, more companies, uh, more a- aspects of government as time goes on, want to have more control over your life, over what you own, over what you do, and you can just kind of see that slow creep coming in as time goes on. And I want to, I would like to read this one article today because it really does hammer that point home, uh, particularly for people who have a MacBook. So there were a lot of people talking about the fact that when an Apple server went down, there were a lot of apps that they were not able to open on their computer. Apparently, the MacBook will speak to a server and it will try to, you know, it'll do something be- before the Apple opens on your computer. Now, if you're not on the internet, that's one thing. But if you are on the internet and the server doesn't respond right, your app may not be able to open. So people had to actually do this weird workaround simply to be able to open apps on the computer that they paid $3,000 for. This is a very interesting article from Sneak.Berlin by Jeffrey Paul that I wanted to read. I highly suggest that you check out his other content. It is very interesting. So it says, Jeffrey Paul, your computer isn't yours. It's here. It happened. Did you notice? I'm speaking, of course, of the world that Richard Stallman predicted in 1997, the one Corey Doctorow also warned us about. On modern versions of Mac OS, you can't simply power on your computer, launch a text editor or ebook reader, and write or read without a log of your activity being transmitted and stored. It turns out that in the current version of the Mac OS, the OS sends to Apple a hash, unique identifier, of each and every program you run. When you run it, lots of people didn't realize this, because it's silent and invisible, and it fails instantly and gracefully when you're offline. But today, the server got really slow, and it didn't hit the fail-fast code path, and everyone's apps failed to open if they were connected to the internet. Because it does this using the internet, the server sees your IP, of course, and knows what time the request came in. An IP address allows for course city level and ISP level geolocation and allows for a table that has the following headings. Date, time, computer, ISP, city, state, application hash. Apple or anyone else can, of course, calculate these hashes for common programs. Everything in the App Store, the Creative Cloud, Tor Browser, cracking or reverse engineering tools, whatever. This means that Apple knows when you're at home. They know when you're at work, what apps you open there, and how often. They know when you open Premiere over at a friend's house on their Wi-Fi. And they know when you open Tor Browser in a hotel on a trip to another city. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Like, this, is, this is incredibly fucking creepy. Who cares, I hear you asking. Well, it's not just Apple. This information doesn't stay with them. These OCSP requests are transmitted unencrypted. Everyone who can see the network can see these, including your ISP and anyone who has tapped their cables. These requests go to a third-party CDN run by another company, Akamai. Since October of 2012, Apple is a partner in the U.S. military intelligence community's PRISM spying program, which grants the U.S. federal police and military unfettered access to this data without a warrant, anytime they ask for it. In the first half of 2019, they did this over 18,000 times, and then another 17,500 times in the second half of 2019. This data amounts to a tremendous trove of data about your life and habits and allows someone possessing all of it to identify your movement and activity patterns. For some people, this can even pose a physical danger to them. Now, it's been possible that up until today to block this sort of stuff on your Mac using a program called Little Snitch, really the only thing keeping me from using Mac OS at this point. In the default configuration, it blanket allows all of this computer to Apple communication. But you can disable those default rules and go on to approve or deny each of these connections. And your computer will continue to work fine without snitching on you to Apple. The version of Mac OS that was released today, 11, known as Big Sur, has new APIs that prevent Little Snitch from working the same way. The new APIs don't permit Little Snitch to inspect or block any OS level processes. Additionally, the new rules in Mac OS 11 even hobble VPNs so that Apple's apps will simply bypass them. So if you use a VPN to prevent them from being able to spy on you, their app will fucking bypass the VPN if you use their operating system. Patrick Wardle lets us know that Trust D, the demon responsible for these requests, is in the new content filter exclusion list in Mac OS 11, which means it can't be blocked by any user-controlled firewall or VPN. In his screenshot, it also shows that ComCenter, used for making phone calls from your Mac and Maps, will also leak past your firewall and VPN, potentially compromising your voice traffic and future plan location information. Those shiny new Apple Silicon Macs that Apple just announced, three times faster and 50% more battery life, they won't run any OS before Big Sur. 
These machines are the first general purpose computers ever where you have to make an exclusive choice. You can have a fast and efficient machine or you can have a private one. Apple mobile devices have already been this way for several years. Short of using an external network filtering device like a travel VPN router that you can totally control, there will be no way to boot any OS on the new Apple Silicon Max that won't phone home. And you can't modify the OS to prevent this, or they won't boot at all due to hardware-based cryptographic protections. Update. It comes to my attention that it may be possible to disable the boot time protections and modify the sign system volume on Apple Silicon Macs via the BPUtil tool. I have one on order and will investigate and report on this blog. As I understand, this would still only permit booting of Apple Sign Mac OS, albeit perhaps with certain objectable system processes removed or disabled. More data forthcoming when I have the system in hand. Your computer now serves a remote master, who has decided they are entitled to spy on you. If you have the most efficient high-res laptop in the world, you can't turn this off. Let's not think very much right now about the additional fact that Apple can, via these online certificate checks, prevent you from launching any app they or their government demands to be censored. Dear Frog, the water is now boiling. The day that Stallman and Dr. Rav has been... Dr. Ao have been warning us about has arrived this week. It's been a slow and gradual process, but we are finally here. You will receive no further alerts. This is insane. You realize that, right? This is, this is the company that's saying we need to put a T2 chip in the machine that does hardware verification on all these different components so that repair shops can't fix them, but because it's, it's because of privacy. It's because of security. You understand. We're not doing that to be anti-repair. We're doing it because we care about your privacy. We care about your privacy so much that we're going to log every app you opened, when you opened it, the uh, name of the app, the IP address of where you opened the app from so that we know where you were when you opened it. And if we don't like that app, we don't want you to open that app, then you won't be able to open that app. We're going to share all that data and, you know, hey, it's going to be unencrypted. We're going to have all that data. It's going to go through a third party and it's going to be unencrypted. But we care about user data and security. That's why we can't let the independent repair shops in because as Charlie Brown said from CTA, you don't understand. They, they may be able to install TikTok on the phone. They may be able to install TikTok where they have access to your phone. Senator, clearly there are a lot of issues that we need to walk through. Um, what I will say is that that supercomputer that's in your pocket, which you say is an iPhone, um, there's a warranty that goes along with that, and there's an authorized network of people that are that we have vetted, who know how to uh, repair that phone and do it under warranty, so that you can still feel confident that what you're getting back is a phone that does not have TikTok put onto it. You know one thing that independent repair shops don't do that the OEM does? You know one thing that you won't have happen in independent repair shops? We don't spy on every single app you ever open and have the data transmitted to us over an unsecured medium. That's something I've never heard a third party repair shop of ever doing. This is a clear cut example of this old 40 or 60 year old principle in politics. Blame the other party for what it is you are doing to distract from it. Blame the third party independent repair shop for playing fast and loose with people's data when we're logging every single app that you open through an unencrypted medium. I never want to hear this shit again. I am bringing this up at every single right to repair hearing from now until kingdom come when I hear some shitbag lobbyists say that the reason that third party repair could be a bad thing is because then people will get access to user data, user data, user privacy, security. The OEM is logging every fucking thing that you do and using this system to ensure built into the operating system that there's no way for you to get around it if you want to be able to open apps at some point that they don't want you to open. And here's the sad part about all of this. Here's the sad part. Here's the part that is going to depress people from the bottom of their hearts throughout my comment section. People are going to buy it anyway. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next video. And if you use the newest Apple operating system, well, they'll know that you're watching it. Bye now.